So you're a complete beginner to Godot and you want to get familiar with the engine and concepts and how to use it. This tutorial will help you get started and will help you get familiar with all of the different aspects of the engine. So you just open up Godot and you get a screen that looks like this. This is where all of your projects will be shown. So in order to create a new project, let's go over and hit this button. First, what we want to do is give the project a name. This name is not an official name or the permanent name. You can always change it. It's just the name of the project. So don't worry, you can name this whatever you want. It could be a placeholder. Like let's say you want to make a space game. You could just call it space game. You don't have to worry about an official name yet. So I'm just going to call it tutorial because this is what I'm making. Hit this button called create folder. By default, it's stored in your documents. And so you don't need to worry about this stuff for now. I'm just going to click create and edit. After you create a project, you'll be met with a screen that looks like this. Don't worry, it might look a bit overwhelming, but I'll guide you through what each of these things mean. On the left here, we have our nodes. Nodes are basically different objects that we use to create the game world. So it starts you off here if you want to create a root node. So depending on what kind of game you want to create, it can be a 2D or a 3D scene. I'm just going to click 2D for now. But depending on what project you want to create, you can click a different button. So here's an example of a simple scene that I set up. Node at the top of the scene is called the root, which is what all nodes inherit from. Nodes are structured in a parent-child configuration. So for example, the sprite 2D is a child of the character body 2D, and the character body 2D is a child of the node 2D, which is the root. Next is the file system down here. This will be where you can access all of your files, saved resources, and scenes, scripts, etc. If you want to put a texture, for example, you can put it in the folder that we created and it will show up here to use in your project. Now let's say you put a texture in here and you drag it out, but it does not look the way you want it to. This applies to 2D or 3D textures. What you can do is go up here to the import tab and this will change how textures are imported. For example, if you have a 3D texture, you can go up here and say preset and 3D, and it'll automatically change some settings for you. Next, this window on the right is called the inspector. It's basically where you change all the different properties of a node. So for example, we have our sprite 2D, which has a texture which you can change. It also has offset, animation, and region. But since the sprite 2D is a node 2D, it also inherits the properties of a node 2D. So down here you can see a node 2D, and it basically has a position, rotation, and scale. The node 2D also inherits from a canvas item and a node, which are some top level nodes. Next, let's check out the node tab up here. This is where you control signals and groups. So for example, I have this button here, and the button has signals that are pressed, button down, button up, etc. These also have inherited signals, so for example, a control has a resize signal. These you can connect to scripts, which we'll get to later. Next in the node tab, we have groups. These basically group different nodes together. So for example, if you wanted to tell if a sprite or a character is an enemy, you can always create an enemy group and assign all of your enemies to that group. Next, what we're going to do is click the output button down here. This is basically where all of your print messages, error messages will be logged. Mainly you'll see the output and the debugger where all of the errors are shown. So this collection of nodes up here is called a scene. You can see different scenes at the top here where you can create new scenes or close scenes. What you can do after you create a scene is click Ctrl and S, which will save the scene. So I'm just going to name this main, since it's like a main scene. And then I'm going to click save, and as you see, it'll show up down here in the files. In order to create a new node in your scene, click the plus button up here to add a child node, and you can search up whatever node you want, or click these drop down arrows and see all the different nodes available. So what I've done is created a sample enemy scene. And so what if I wanted to add that into my main scene? 
Well, what I can do is click this button up here to instantiate a child scene, and just select my enemy scene, and open. And there it is. Now I'll go over the scripting basics. So what I'm going to do is click this button up here to create a new script. And you can name this whatever you want, but I'm just going to leave it as the default. And I'm going to click create. Now this is a template script with a few basic functions. So to start off our script, at the first line, it needs to be extends, and then whatever the node is up here. So this is a node 2D, so it extends a node 2D. This just tells the script what node it inherits from. After that is the ready function. This is basically called when the node is uh, created in the scene tree for the first time. Basically, when you initiate the node, it'll be called. Even though the syntax of the language is a lot like Python, all code has to be written inside of a function, except for variable declarations, of course, so it's kind of similar to Java. Next up, we have the process function and the physics process function. These functions are basically ran every frame and every physics frame. So this is dependent on the FPS, and this is dependent on a set physics frame rate. The delta parameter is something that you could use in your script, which is basically the time since the previous frame. So it can help out with smoothing and generally keeping your movement consistent. Next we have the input method, which basically activates whenever an input is detected by the node. This is mainly used for different mouse events because I'll show you in a bit how to get keyboard input. So back to the signals, what we can do is go back to our button and go to node, signals, and we could double tap the pressed signal and connect it to our node 2D. So well, this method will basically run whenever we click that button. In order to receive keyboard input, you can go up to project, project settings, input map, and here you can define new inputs. So for example, I'm going to define an input move forward, add it, and what you can do is click the plus button and type a key. So I'm just going to press the W key and click OK, and that's how you define new inputs. So if I wanted to use that in my code, what I could do is put if input dot is action just pressed, move forward, and then I could write whatever code I wanted down here. The difference between is action just pressed and is action pressed is that is action pressed will detect if you hold down the key, and it'll always be running when you hold it down compared to is action just pressed, will activate only once when you start pressing the key. On the top here, we have a few different tabs. So if you wanted to switch between 2D, 3D, a script, or the asset library. In order to run your project and test your project, all you have to do is come up here to the play button, and click the F5 key, and you could select current, the main scene, and your project will run. Now, there are a few basic nodes that you should know. First of all are the bodies. These are basically characters and physics objects in your scene. Static body stays still. For example, a wall, a floor, etc. Now, a character body is a physics node that you can control through a script. So if you had a character, whether it be a first person, third person, etc., you'll, you'll want to use this node. And finally, we have the rigid body, which is a physics body ran by the physics engine. So for example, if you wanted to make a bouncy ball or some object determined by physics, then you'll want to use a rigid body. A body is usually made up of two portions, the visual part and the physics part. So a character body must have a collision shape which is basically how the object collides with other objects. Also, optionally, it can have some sort of visual component, which, for example, it's a sprite, or in 3D, it would be called a mesh. And you want to set up the hierarchy like this. Additionally, there are nodes to play audio in your world, such as the audio stream player. Another important node is the camera node. This is basically how your viewport sees the, world, sees the game world. So if you want to have a movable character, or a 3D player for example, you want to have a camera so you can actually see the world. 
from the camera's point of view. Let's go ahead and create one now. And in the inspector, you want to make sure enabled is on. In a script or something, you could actually move the camera around, and that's how you could get a different view of the world. Now, this is just the basics to get familiar with the engine. I'd recommend looking at the official documentation or following some YouTube tutorials to help you get started with creating an actual sample game. This is just to help you out so that all of these different menus and nodes don't seem intimidating. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.